Hello, fearless fam. Welcome to another episode where we shed light on topics most like to keep in the dark. This is your host, Chuby, and today's elephant is a level five. I take this particular topic personal since it is dealing with the band of books in school. Yes, books in school. So today is Chuby's book corner band of books. Yeah, I, I don't even know how to put words together on this because obviously growing up, there was all sorts of books, all kinds of books that we learned things from that were taught to us. Here, go read this book. You know, and we weren't thinking, is it, appro- is it appropriate? Is it inappropriate? We just read it and it got our minds thinking. But we do have a definition or an explanation in this case what gets a book banned? A book is typically banned due to sexuality, explicit content, offensive language, or because it was deemed unsuitable for any age group, according to the ALA. But reasons for challenging books vary by person or group. As per the Washington Post, a majority of the books that have been targeted nationwide focus on sexual orientation, gender identity, race, and racism. In 2022, it reached an all-time peak of books being banned, Texas being one of the first first to ban books with a number as high as 713 books being banned. That is an insane number. How can people... I don't even get it. When I first was... um seeing this coming up in the news and things like that, that books are being banned again, like, I had to sit there and be like, why? Like, what's going on? But before we continue, this episode was sponsored by JFone Party Rental. For all your party needs, all the ideas you think are crazy, JFone Party Rental will make your vision come to life, just like my backdrop here in the studio. Give JFone Party Rental a follow at JFone Party Rental or give them a text at 786-769-4950 and tell them Chuby for No Filters or Fears sent you. But yes, fearless fam, from July 2021 to March 2022, Texas has 713 books banned from schools or they're being, you know, reviewed to be banned. Uh, the information provided by statistic.com. So basically, the parents make complaints about certain books that will be make that will make their kids uncomfortable. So they want to they want the books banned. Um, I think it is healthy to feel uncomfortable, especially about certain topics out there. Also, a book talking about sexuality can be liberating for someone struggling with their sexuality and that can be comforting to them and so in some way for them to realize they're not alone and that something can be done about it if they can't confine in their parents or anybody close to them I feel like books do that you know um books help in so many ways I'm pretty sure um all of us are connected to a book that we were like, oh my God, this is the book that, you know, made you feel, wow, this book helped me in so many ways. And we all feel that way. We, you know, I just feel like it's insane that they're trying to control what kids learn in school nowadays. And we're going to touch up on this again, because I feel like it's insane but yes, from July 2021 to March 2022, Texas has 713 books banned from schools. This information was provided by Statista.com. But here's a list of all the states that follow and how many books they have banned in their states. After Texas, is Pennsylvania with 456, then Florida with 204, Oklahoma 43, Kansas 30, Indiana 18, Tennessee 16, Virginia 16, Missouri 15, Georgia 13, New York 12, and Utah 11. 
these are some for now but that is crazy and some of the um all these states have books in common that are um collectively being banned so i just feel like it's crazy like so you don't want kids to find information out there it's insane to me but here are some of the books that are being banned in texas for example um right now we have uh it, this is a particular school in kathy independent school district uh for example all boys are into blue by george johnson forever for a year by t b gottfred the handsome girl and her beautiful boy by t b gottfred jack of hearts and other parts by elsie rosen uh lawn boy by jonathan evison losing the girl book one by mary naomi me earl and the dying girl by genesee and uh, jesse andrews the nerdy and the dirty by bt godfred out of darkness by ashley hope perez wow bt godfrey has a lot of books being banned if we haven't read some of this we need to go in and and actually go read it make make these books unbanned teach them to whoever you know um fearless fam how do you feel about these books being banned what what is going on what do you know in your states uh the books that are being banned which books are being banned in your state um because because we have a list going um for example um in florida in some of their cities they have uh for example damsel by elena arnold forever by judy bloom lucky by alice siebold monday's not coming by tiffany jackson not my problem by sierra smith red hood by elena arnold um this book is gay by juno dawson this one summer by Mar mariko tamaki why girls what girls are made of by elena arnold um i could continue with the list of florida because it continues in for alaska by john green two boys kissing by david levita extremely loud and incredibly close by jonathan safran 13 reasons why by jay asher i mean florida has again 200 and what eight books i said banned so the list is incredibly long but i was reading an article from uh, vox.com and in the article it says you're seeing really powerful movements underway to constrain expression it's not about discussing ideas objectively it's a, it's about not discussing them at all says jeffrey sachs a professor at acadia university who tracks free speech in education and it continued with on the local level the effort manifests in parent and activists activists led drives to remove books from shelves and curriculums on the state level there's a there's been a push to pass critical race theory bans that constrain teacher speech and educational transparency rules that sometimes go as far as putting teachers on publicly accessible webcams and forcing them to seek parental permission in students trying to join LGBTQ clubs. Yes, let's this sentence sinking. I was reading that and I was like, wait, what? I'm sorry, but if you're making a curriculum, right, and you're writing and you're sitting there and you're reading, you know, okay, what am I going to teach the kids or what books are out there that will be more informational or more, um, ex not accessible, but more um, educational in some way or shape or form. I get it that there is a, a line between, okay, I'm going to teach them about, um, I don't know, some obscene thing about God knows what, I can't even say what it will be, but I know any topic that the teacher wants to talk about, I mean, come on, I read Mein Kampf 
I read all about the Holocaust. I read, and Frank is being banned? What? I mean, come on. Yes, it was a story about a Jewish girl who, it's a real true story. Why is that being banned? Why? Because you don't want to teach them. You don't want your kid being uncomfortable about something that happened in history. That is the whole point of a book. It's a diary of someone who lived. Wouldn't you want your kids to, to learn the history? So you rather not want them to be uncomfortable and not, and learn something true or, you know, be in school and like not feel anything and be like, oh, I don't know. I didn't read that in school, which I have some people well, at the same age level that I was in. They were like, oh, I never read that. What? They didn't teach you that in school or this or that. And you're whitewashing the whole history anyway. That's how I feel. But books, because they tell the, sh the true story, they tell a, a, a story about a point of view of someone that, that, that lived through this. I guess that also you don't want them to learn anything about history. I don't know. It's To me, it's just mind boggling that some parents want to control what their children learn in school. And again, like the article said, um, in the state level as well. I don't get it. Like racism is real, LGBTQ, um, you name it. These are real things that are happening. So if the kids cannot talk to their parents, now you can't even learn it in school. What do you think is a safe route for, for kids to go to? Internet? Where we already know how we talked about um, kids being vulnerable to situations of human trafficking. I mean, these are these are things that link together. And again, there's a lot of misinformation out there in, in the interwebs, a lot of misinformation. So they're learning something that may not be true, they may not be fact-checked, that can potentially put them in harm's way or give them a, a different sense of idea that is like, oh, okay, I can be this way. But there are certain books that are beautifully written that tell a true story about someone that i'm sorry but if someone is reading a book and they could resonate with it and they can feel less alone why ban why ban that book because you yourself as an adult feel like oh my kid is gonna be uncomfortable i mean did you talk to your kids about what they have read in school or what they are reading in school, what they're reading on their personal time. If they're reading it, have you talked to them how they're feeling about it or why they're reading certain books or that certain topic? I mean, you also have to question that, why they're reading certain things. Everybody has a different preference. This, These books that I might be being banned, some might not even be reading it. But, but I feel like taking that accessibility away from the students um, is putting them in, in harm's way in, in, in some way. You know, kids have a lot of emotions. We're people, they're people. And I feel like having these books, these type of books accessible to them, especially in, a, in, in school where they're supposed to be learning something about themselves, about the world, about history about the future anything and you're taking that away i feel like you're robbing them what's the whole point of going to school if they cannot be uncomfortable because that's the whole point of being in school you're learning something out of your comfort zone you're learning something learning that's the whole point of of school to learn something has for for in the present something that and, and, and books re reveal different things about yourself, too. That's where you come from. Oh, your ideas are like, oh, my God, I could relate to this book. And you don't even know why. And then you, as more you do research and, and, and things like that, you realize now you know why. Honestly, what, what are kids learning in school? I just feel like trying to control them um, by not really teaching them the reality uh, about this world is about I mean what what are you doing what are you trying to do well fearless fam I think my rant was gone a little bit too long but 
since this is my Chubby's book corner episode, I do have a list of my favorite bank books, which some have shaped me, helped me figure out who I am, and overall help, helped my creative writing in some shape or form or whatever. Um, the Bluest Eyes by Toni Morrison. Any to Toni Morrison book. Come on. Why would you band? Why? They Hate You Give. Who did it piss me off? I mean, not the book itself, just the 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 what was happening in the book. You know, a lot of emotions, and our boys aren't blue by George uh, Johnson. My list is pretty long, but these are my top three from the band from the band books that are that are my favorites. Yeah, um, which ones are yours? Which ones from all the books that are being banned that have been banned in the past that are being banned now? Um, which ones are your favorite? Just leave a comment below let us know i want to i want to read i want to know all the books because as you all know i love books um secondhand books preferably you know if it's already been in circulation it's perfectly fine i prefer that you know not creating you know more <laughs> to this world um but yes books books either creativity like it takes you to a different world um, as you know, I like nonfiction books, bi biography books, history books, things of that nature. Um, obviously, you know, books based on a true story, things like that, autobiographical books. Uh, things, that, things of that nature are, are what attract me. Obviously, poetry books and whatever and, and et cetera. But books are amazing. They are they are a way to discover yourself, to find out who you are. Um, again, like I said before, to learn about the past, to learn about what things have happened that are changed, that have changed, and why you are the why is your present the way it is. Um, I think that's the purpose of these books. You know, um, they help you navigate a part of your life that you are questioning. Sometimes books do that. They help more than people do or people can. And I feel that banning certain books just because of, I don't even know what. Is it they're afraid, parents are afraid of what, com uncomfortability? We do that every day. We do that every day here on No Filters, No Fears to be uncomfortable because you're so su you're supposed to feel feel something but um i feel like banning these books that are crucial to de developmental minds i'm sorry but without these books what are you gonna make a pg-13 pg-7 whatever and and just keep it simple they're not gonna learn anything they're not gonna be able to get out of their shells and express who they are you're not gonna be able to help themselves and, and connect to a book that's gonna make you say, damn, if it wasn't because of this book. One of my all time favorite books is called The Book Thief. Brilliant writer, I love this book. I have I own it several times. I lost it the first time, unfortunately, but then I got it, you know, um, secondhand copy. And I've been reading it since I was 20. And I've been reading it and will forever read it. I read it to my niece when she was seven years old. Yes. If you know what the book is about, I read it to her when she was seven years old. Um, and now she's she's 16. And I it didn't, I mean, didn't change her. Her vocabulary expanded, that's for sure. But my point that I'm trying to say is that you don't know how a book is going to impact a person. And you or not impact them at all. They're gonna read it and feel indifferent about it. So I don't know. Uh, this I am still shocked about the whole thing. I just hope that these students go out of their way to still want to read these books, to wonder why these books are being banned, and go and be like, okay, I'm gonna go read this book on purpose because it's being banned. I just hope that there's no repercussions for this because I will. It's crazy as it is, 
But if you are a student, you're looking at this episode and you're an adult and if you agree, great. And, and if you don't, just at least wonder, go wonder why it's bothering you, why this particular topic is bothering you personally. Because a book about racism, why? Do you yourself have an issue with that about the LGBT community? Are you questioning yourself? Hey, we all need to do some healing, some some deep down, you know, and figure out what the problem is. I'm sorry, but if you have a problem with a book, it's, it's a direct um, reflection of how you're feeling. There must be something there that you are like very uncomfortable and you wouldn't want no one to read it. But if you agree that the youth should be reading all these books and you're an aunt, you are a grandmother, you are whatever you are, a sibling, let them hear about it, suggest it to them. But yes, fearless fam, share your books in the comments below. I will love, 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 love to read them. And like I always say, when we say stay fearless, I mean it. Like right now, it's like this fear of people being uncomfortable and, and, and oh my God, I don't want, no, stay fearless. Try to do everything, do it all. And let, we cannot let fear win. Yes, it's easier said than done. I know that, but it's hard. It's hard to live in the world we're living in now because we're, everybody's trying to censor everything. Um, I'm not even going to get into if it's the left or the right. Or, it doesn't matter to me. Just everybody's censoring everything. Um, thank you for watching, everyone. Thank you for always being here every Monday at 8 p.m. or 8-ish when the video decides to load. <laughs> um, thank you for your comments. Thank you for your support. Thank you for... Thank you for um, actually answering the question of which episode to do next. Thanks to you all. We're in our next episode is microaggression. And that is another topic that I cannot wait to get into. Thank you, Fearless Fam. Thank you, everyone who always sends us messages. And I appreciate you all. And remember to go to our anchor Apple, wherever, YouTube, wherever you like to listen to this podcast or watch this podcast. I appreciate it. And like I always say, stay fearless, everyone.